Recently, I shot three different videos, one being a commercial, another one being more music video, and the final one being narrative driven to show you the diversity of what one tool can get you. By the end of the video, I'm gonna teach you different shots that you can get with a gimbal. We're gonna be talking about focal lengths, lens shot diversity, and environments where it works, and environments where it doesn't work. Consider this a masterclass on gimbal cinematography. Right? Yeah, 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 like okay. Today. So, I come, I push up, and then, you get to like a little close-up thing, and then you start. Okay, do you want to just improv it Let's and do it. go for? Okay, Let's great. Do music. So the company Zhuin gave me their new Crane 4, and I wanted to use it in as many different environments as possible to illustrate how versatile this tool is. One of the biggest misconceptions with gimbal cinematography is the fact that it is a tool that can bop up and down, move left and right, forward, backwards, and circle in all these different motions. But when they're used the best is when you channel one piece of gear. Target one camera movement, use that for your shot, and move forward. Once they start bobbing up and down and you start actually ruin your horizontal axes or your vertical axes and start doing maybe both, that's when they lose their mode. Yeah, shooting this with autofocus is so nice. So you can just get your shot that you're looking for, there it is. Here are the shots you can get. First is crane shot, putting the camera either on a pole or just arcing it up and high and putting it on a wide angle, you can get nice high looking down shots. I am just guessing. The next angle would be a slider or dolly, which you can do by tracking beside a character. By locking your tilt and pan and just doing a horizontal movement, this will emulate something a slider or dolly can. You can even just do solid lock-offs. I call this the falling off the truck shot, where you just put the legs out on the tripod, set it down. I actually use these all the time, from cloud shots to bikes passing by the camera to even just nice establishing wides. It's amazing how nice the shots are just by setting it down on the ground. Let's do tracking shots next. A little bit more elaborate, and by using the extendable arm attached to the Zhuin Crane 4 and attaching my monitor to the side, I was able to get these beautiful tracking shots of my buddy Nick on his bike. I think there's something really important about getting your hands off the camera and using a device that kind of allows you to think not necessarily the technicality of the shot, but the story of the shot. Hey, that was really good. Can we do it again? How are your feet? Really? Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Can we have a little bit of more lead up at the beginning? I'll yell action when I want you to start moving. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Another angle would be a simple push in, pull out similar to what a dolly or a slider. I like this because you don't see any of the track. So if you do it smooth enough, and even if you put a little warp stabilizer on, you can get a very solid push in shot that can emulate a dolly shot without seeing the tracks. I'm like dripping in sweat. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, <laughs> filthy, gross sweaty. Nice job, how's that go? Great, I'm just gonna swap a lens and then... My rule of thumb is if there's lots of movement happening in the frame, you don't need to have a lot of movement happening within the camera. So for these shots of Spence walking across the beach, I just had my pan and tilt locked and I followed him and kept him in frame by moving my body if I needed to. But then when the, he was starting to do stuff a little bit more active and I wanted to feel the activeness of the frame, I switched it over into a follow mode so I could follow all of the different motions that he was creating on the beach. And the versatility of moving this into a handled underslung mode allowed it to feel more more like a documentary setup while capturing commercial quality shots. We were able to hammer this out with just one gimbal setup, one lens setup, and one actor. Now, you don't have to do crazy movements. You can lock your camera off and just hold it still. This is how we were able to get some nice biking shots, shots of Spence on the beach, and even grabbing time lapses. Just by popping out the legs, setting the camera down, I find that using pieces of gear like a tripod, amazing, and having different accessories like dollies, really nice, but when you're under the gun, setting the legs out, popping the head up, and then mounting the camera onto the tripod, and then tweaking and maneuvering, a lot more difficult than what it sounds. So for me, it just works so nice just to be able to like operate myself like a tripod, hold still, and grab the shot. Oh, and my final favorite mode, and this is the most wild one, we used it constantly in our latest feature film, but is POV mode. So disabling the locked horizontal axis and being able to sway left and right, creating these sort of hypnotic Dutch moves is one of my favorite modes that these gimbals can get. I tried emulating it in handheld, but it just, 
didn't do the trick. I found that I was constantly trying to focus on keeping my hands still versus what the camera was capturing. Let's move on to focal lengths. In this video, I tinkered with several different focal lengths from 16 mil ultra wide all the way to a narrowed in close up on a macro lens and each one giving their own flavor. I think that setting and forgetting and just having one wide shot is not the best way to do. I found my favorite focal lengths actually with this were going into that tighter range rather than having the ultra wide. So punching in closer to a 35 millimeter and all the way to an 85 were the ones that looked the most cinematic. Gave me so much movement in the focal, in the front and background. Like these shots of Jackie with the 85 whipping around her in slow motion I tried doing that handheld. I found that the handheld motion within the shot removed me from the beauty of the scene. Woo! Woo! Okay. Got lots on that angle. Over. I'm just gonna put the macro lens on, then we're done. Okay. We're slapping a macro lens on. We just did 85 mil. Is this too in your face? Not at all. <laughs> um, oh, wow, okay. Let's see what this does. So I threw a macro lens onto this and had it like just an inch away or a centimeter away from Jackie's eye. And I was able to just get these beautiful details and textures. You're gonna tilt, you're gonna tilt your head down and close your eyes. Uh, you're gonna start with your eyes open and then I'm gonna, yeah, do my thing. And three, two, Yes, you can get this on a tripod, but the time it takes to set a tripod up, get the, your actor angled in the right light, just takes so much time. And when we were working on our feature film, I used the exact same method where it was easier just to put the lens of choice on a gimbal and emulate whatever camera rig we were gonna spend an hour setting up right then and there, and we were able to cut our shooting time in half. We're about to go shoot some of the coolest shit you ever all seen. Yeah, that was the coolest shit y'all ever did see. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, let's go out to a Canadian forest right after it rained and put no bug spray on and be in t-shirts and a dress. It's probably a great idea. Also, we always forget that I'm gonna be in bare feet on gravel and rocks <laughs> and so hard sticks. Because this tool can do so much, what can you do with it? So rather than trying to do everything in one shot, no, I'm gonna get everything that this one shot can get like tracking shots, following, and then I'm gonna move on to my next setup and emulate that move. When we shot the dance film, bike film, and even the commercial, I made sure that I just stuck to the same movement for the one setup and moved on to the next. And this is how you're able to ace your shot and then not have to go into the edit and work around all your camera errors. You're gonna have way less errors and actually have a much better time in the edit because you know you can trust how you shot it. I want to talk about the gimbal I used specifically on this video because it's just so dang good. This is the Juin Crane 4. First thing I want to show you is the light on the front. Look at this. Whoa! And you like dial it back, but like look how bright it can get. Just like, oh! Imagine you're shooting like a wedding or you're shooting some sort of vlog or perhaps even just some stylized fashion video, music video. Dial in your color temperature settings by just toggling the button. Now we can go nice and orange. Oh, my microphone fell off. Now let's do a bit of a tour and talk about this amazing gimbal that Juin created. Okay, so right here is my favorite part, which is this little wrist guard that you can put on to protect your wrist when you're shooting all day. This is game changer, and then you can adjust and tilt it 
to whatever angle you want. Very similar to this guy, which I've talked about many times in this video, but honestly, my favorite thing, it can change size. It's got a nice soft grip on it. And so let's say you're shooting something smaller in a more tiny space, or you need to travel with this, this thing can uh, extend or shorten depending on what you need, <laughs> but I like it always extended. That sounded weird. I did not watch or read any tutorials. I just hopped in on using this. And that's because Juin has created the simplest of interface. If you don't have a touch screen on your gimbal yet, this is so nice because you can go through your different modes and slide through what you want to go through. The top three are kind of my favorite, but perhaps let's say you're on the go and want to go through this without touching the touch screen. This little button right here navigates you through your different modes, which you can see up here in the top left corner. So this is your pan follow. This is just your locked on mode. So if you're doing any of those steady stable shots, you want that. This is follow. So it will do your pan and tilt in all your movements by camera. And then it'll go through those top three toggling that. But if you want some more sort of extreme or fun things like go or pov or vortex this is the modes you want to slide it into and you can navigate that through the menu and then by exiting and locking your screen this will also detect what areas are unbalanced by lighting red now i've actually got this thing pretty well balanced but if it was not these lights would turn into red i would know that i need to adjust these areas so there is a argument that things like IBIS and Warp Stabilizer, or, or if you shoot on Sony, the Catalyst Browse software are really good. I put that to the comparison for this using Warp Stabilizer and IBIS to show you what that looks like on a lens like an 85 millimeter and on the wide angle, shooting something very similar. And I just found that using the gimbal, while maybe the two could get close, I love having an accessory that gets my hands off the camera so I can focus more on story and motion versus thinking of technicalities. And if you get used to using this, it becomes just like another extension to shooting similar to what a camera is an extension to your shooting experience. The biggest thing that a lot of people don't talk about for gimbals is posture. It's how you're standing and how you shoot your video. When you're filming, you want to do long stretch strides versus short jerky motions. By doing that heel toe movement and even more so just stretching your leg out sort of like in a yoga pose is kind of the best way for you to get the smoothest shots. My biggest takeaway from doing these three shoots this week was the fact that that this one piece of gear makes me a one size fits all filmmaker, getting every single shot that I could dream of with one tool. Most camera gear kind of does one single purpose, whether it's a dolly that can just get you your dolly shots or your crane that can only get you your crane shot. And all of those things require additional operators, more time, money, and can slow down and probably hinder the filmmaking process. But what I've learned from shooting these commercials, these little music videos, and now doing a feature film and using a lot of it on a gimbal, this is the best way to accelerate your time, accelerate your career, and split the time in half to what it takes to use all of these other gear. If you've never bought a gimbal before, I hope this video can push you into that direction. Even though this video was sponsored and promoted, uh, with Juin involved, I speak highly about gimbals consistently and they're my favorite piece of gear to use for shoots. Biggest help for this channel is uh, writing some comments like, you know, doing that thing, sharing it to your friends if you found this fascinating and uh, hitting a subscribe button because that does a whole heck of a lot. And also take a look at Juin. If you ever want to look at a crane or a gimbal or whatever, uh, this is the best time to do it. Love you guys. Have an amazing day.